My name is Miss Klein. I believe Dr. Kellerman is expecting me. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Hello. Hi. What happened to your foot? I broke it. Oh, we're late to see you. We're late to How old are you, Miss Klein? 28, Doctor. Why do you want this job? I'd like to work with children. Do you have children? No. I used to dream about getting married and having beautiful children of my own, but it hasn't happened yet, and I'm beginning to think it never will. Why do you say beautiful children? Is it that you're beautiful? No. Well, our children aren't either, Miss Klein. At least not in the conventional sense. Sucking your thumb, man. Hey, who are you? How's the new teacher, Stan? What do you care? Listen, who's talking? She never even had a boyfriend. I had plenty. Yeah, who wants a cripple? Oh, shut up, Stanley. Why don't you try to be friends sometime? Julio. Good morning, Miss Hoyman. Good morning. Clean up 5C, Julio. The Benjamin girl left last night. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Just supposed... do as I say. Now, this is Harold Wicker. He's going to be here for a while. Sit down, Harold. Behave yourselves. I'll be right back. Dr. Jordan wanted in wing D. Dr. Jordan wanted in wing D. Hey, man, what you got? Must be something bad that you wouldn't be in this place. Let him alone, Stanley. I'm just going to wise him up. You got to know the score, because they're going to put you through a lot of changes here. Now, suppose I'm one of the interns, see? And I'll come up to your bedside all bunkity bunkity. Now look at your chart. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Who are we? We want to examine you. Open your mouth. Now I can see by looking in your mouth, Harold, that your behind is about to drop off. But you got nothing to worry about. We gonna get you a behind transplant as soon as we find us a donor. First, man, we're going to have to cut about four inches off your pajamas. Leave him alone. Get off my back. Give me the scissors. What's going on? Give me those, Lexi. Where did you get them? You, Lexi Markham, are a very uncooperative child. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see all your smiling faces. Good morning, Miss Foreman. Good morning, Dr. Kellerman. This is our new teacher, Miss Klein. This is Lisa Foreman, our chief nurse. How do you do? And these are our children. They're actually midgets in the service of an enemy power. <laughs> They're just pretending to be sick so they won't have to study and they can watch all that junk on television. Their mission is to destroy as many teachers as possible. Miss Foreman, time for the morning rounds. They're all yours, Miss Klein. Thank you, Doctor. Well, I hope we're all going to get to be very good friends. As Dr. Kellerman told you, my name is Miss Klein. I'll spell it on the board for you. And I'm going to be your new teacher. Now, the first thing I have to do is take the roll. Is everybody here who's supposed to be here? Who usually sits in that seat? Laura Benjamin. And where is she today? Does anybody know where Laura is? 
Doesn't anybody know? I know, because I saw her go. Because I'm in her room. Shut up, Harold. Oh, where is she? They took her home. Because she got well? No, because she died. Team one to surgery. Team one to surgery. Well, before we begin, I think it would be a good idea to get to know each other a little, hmm? I'll go around the room and you each tell me your names, all right? Let's start over here. What's your name? Anna. Good morning, Anna. And you are? Harold Wicker. How old are you, Harold? Nine. And what about this little girl? What's your name? Come on. Won't you tell me your name? Her name's Fidel Melendez. Uh, thank you, but I'd really prefer that she told me. She can't. She has throat cancer. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. She had an operation for it. I see. And uh, you are? Tracy Davenport. Well, why don't you tell me something about yourself, Tracy? Well, what do you want to know? Whatever you feel like telling. Okay, I'm rich and I'm a brat. My parents are divorced and they feel so guilty about me, I get whatever I want. Is that enough? That's a little more than I had in mind, Tracy. How old are you? Fourteen. How old are you? Twenty-eight. How come you're not married? I don't really think that's any of your business, Tracy. Well, how come you get to ask us a lot of questions? Well, that's... I'll the... marry you, Miss Klein. Thank you. You have terrific legs. Yours aren't bad either. What's your name? Stanley Becker. It's nice to meet you, Stanley Becker. And who do we have over here? Can't talk English. She's Vietnamese. Oh, uh, vous parlez français, n'est-ce pas? Oui, mademoiselle. Quel est votre nom? Je m'appelle Jim Jim. Bonjour, Jim Jim. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Do you understand or speak any English at all? A little. Good. We'll work on that. And you are? Lexi Martin. Well, why don't you tell me? He doesn't like anyone to touch him. Oh. All right, I think. Oh, we have one more person here. Who are you? William Clark. It's nice to meet you, William Clark. Well, uh, now I have to find out where each of you stands so that you won't be behind when you get back to your regular Fidel? school. So I think that you should. Just a minute. Fidel? Just a minute. I'll get her. Excuse me. Fidel! I would like to come back and see. Fidel! Tracy! Fidel! Where are you going? My medication Fidel. makes me feel dopey. I'm going back to my room to watch television. Yeah, I don't feel so hot either. Well, I'd like Fidel. you both to ask permission before you leave the class. Well, Misty Grit said we could do whatever we wanted. Yeah, we're Fidel. sick kids. So they walked out on you. I didn't know what to do. Sit down. You like half of a corned beef sandwich? No, thank you. You got to keep your strength up for this job. How do you discipline a sick child? Well, that depends on how sick he is. Well, how sick are these children? You really want to know? I think it's important. Okay. <clears throat> Tracy Davenport. She's the oversexed teenager. Malignant tumor of the knee. Betatron therapy. Maybe yes, maybe no. Stanley Becker. The ghetto kid, welfare mother, the whole catastrophe. Puts on a tough show, but he's a paper tiger. Severe cardiac damage, rheumatic fever. The slightest exertion could kill him. We may try a transplant. Fido Melendez, the little doll with the big eyes. Thyroid tumor. We removed that, and there's a good chance for a complete recovery there. Gien Van Trang. Malaria, dysentery, rickets, shrapnel wounds. He needs more surgery, but uh, he'll probably live to die for his country in the next war. Harold Wicker, leukemia. It's what we call the good kind, because it takes longer. See what you're up against, Miss Klein? 
I had no idea. You want to quit? Doctor, I spent every penny I had training myself as a special teacher. I worked as a secretary and a substitute teacher for 10 years while I went to night school. I didn't hire you for your qualifications. They weren't that good. Well, why did you hire me? Because you have a quality that, that these children need. But what do they need? They need someone whose heart they can break. I didn't know I was a sacrificial lamb. Let me explain a few things that I deliberately overlooked in our first interview. The average pediatric nurse sticks it out for less than a year. With teachers, it varies. Your predecessor, Mrs. DeGroot, was here for six months before she had a total nervous collapse. You make it sound like the hardest job in the world. I think maybe it is. If it doesn't break your heart, you're wrong for the job. If it does, they may carry you out of here screaming. Well, Miss Klein? See you tomorrow, Doctor. If you have any problems, find the chapel. The other doctors and nurses have their hands full just trying to keep these kids alive. Any questions? One. What's that? Do they know? Do they know they have leukemia or bone cancer? Most of them, yes, but they don't equate that with dying. They're children. They're alive. They feel. But they're lonely. They're scared and demoralized. Your job is to keep them interested in living. I don't know if I can. Neither do I. Miss Klein? Yes. We all come here with romantic ideas about being angels of mercy. Don't be afraid to let them see you cry. I don't cry, Doctor. You will, Miss Clark. You will. Even angels cry. solve your problem. Hmm. Well, how many of you tried? Thank you, Harold. What about the rest of you? Can you tell me why you didn't try? Stanley? Mm -hmm. Tracy? It's boring. Everything around here is boring. I see. I'd rather watch TV. So would I, but the Board of Education says you have to keep up your studies while you're here. What for? So you won't be ignorant when you grow up. Who are you kidding, Miss Klein? Nobody here is going to grow up. Look, kids, I want to help you. Sure, everybody wants to help us. Makes them feel good. How long have you been here, Lexi? Two years. And I don't even know what's going on. They don't tell you nothing. They just put you through a lot of changes, that's all. Well, excuse I... me, Miss Klein. I need Harold Wicker. What for? Just come along. What are they going to do to me? You're scheduled for a bone scan. What's a bone scan? Does it hurt? Just come with me. No! Either you come or I get an attendant. No, I'm not going. We'll see about that. Oh, my mother! Bone scan isn't bad, Harold. Well, what is it? They just take a picture of you, an x-ray, that's all. You sure? I had it done lots of times. You can take it. Why do they do it? To make sure you don't have any bad stuff in your bones. Mm -hmm. You show them how brave you are. When you get back, I'll teach you my karate chop. 
One smack, you can knock a nurse right on her behind. No fooling. Honest. Excuse the interruption this time. Come on, Harold. Go ahead, Harold. Attention, Jones. Please report to the commissary. Attention, Jones. Please report to the Here. Miss Harlan. Wouldn't it be uh, easier if you explained to them what was going on? There are 28 bids in this ward, Miss Klein. I don't have time. And it's better if they don't know. Well, it just seems that it's so frightening to them. I suppose you do your job and I'll do mine. Oh, I didn't mean to criticize. Look, Dr. Kellerman and I ran this department 15 years before you came here, Miss Klein, and we'll be running it after you leave. If you have any objections, I suggest you talk to him. He's partial to young women. Thank you, Lexi. You were very good with Harold. So, how did it go today, Miss Klein? Well, at least nobody walked out on me. Good. I came to ask you about the Markham boy. And yeah, what about him? He fell down trying to walk this morning. <sighs> he won't quit, that kid. What's wrong with him? Degenerative nerve disease. Why? He won't let anyone touch him. I know. Is that due to his illness? Lexi Markham has been in and out of hospital since he was four. His mother is dead. His father is a career diplomat who lives in Europe. The kid has logged maybe a million hours of TV. He's faced a hundred Lisa Foyermans who've turned off their feelings in order to survive. He seems so alone. He is. I'd like to help him. Not a chance. Lexi Markham is a miniature version of all those lonely Western heroes he sees on TV. Only he rides into town in a wheelchair. He doesn't trust anybody over the age of 12 except Tracy Davenport. This kid has a sarcoma. Damn it. Well, I've got to be going. Miss Klein? Yes. Lisa Feuerman tells me you've been trying to interfere with her hospital routine. I merely made a suggestion. She's the best pediatric supervisor in New York. She runs my department like a Swiss watch. I don't want to lose her. I won't criticize her again. Hello. Can I give you a lift? Fine Armenian nose tells me you're wearing my favorite perfume, right? Right. I have this terrible problem. I'm always being rejected in elevators. That's why I talk to myself. How do you do? My name is Aram Artunian. I'm 35. I love children. I have graceful cat-like movements, and I teach material medica to board nurses. Really, Dr. Artunian? How fascinating. We must talk again sometime. This is my flaw. It's been a pleasure talking to you. If you ever need an Armenian pathologist... Excuse me. Did you say you teach? Yes. Why? Well, I just may need an Armenian pathologist after all. How do you do? My name is Dr. R. Martunian. I'm 35. I have graceful cat-like movements and I teach materia medica to board nurses. And you like children? Before I go into my act, I want to congratulate all you kids on grabbing off a nifty number like Miss Klein for a teacher. He's sexy. Now, as Miss Klein says, you all have a lot of questions about the tests and things we've been putting you through. So you ask me the questions and I'll try to answer them, okay? Who's first? Oh, come on. Somebody must have a question. What's leukemia? Leukemia. Okay. In everybody's blood, there are some good guys and bad guys. Now, sometimes, the bad guys come riding into town and shoot up a lot of the good guys. If it's a certain kind of bad guy, they call it leukemia. That's where I am. Why do they put blood into me? They're sticking more good guys into your blood to help you feel stronger. Okay? Okay. Yeah. 
What's an immunosuppressant? An immunosuppressant. Right on. Now, that's a tough one, but I'll try to answer it. Do any of you children know what uh, antibodies are? Well, what are you trying to do? Get me fired? The first week you had that young doctor teaching Materia Medica to kids. And now you want me to conduct them on a guided tour of the hospital facilities? Oh, no, Dr. Artunian will conduct the tour. I just need your permission. What's wrong with reading and writing? I can't teach the Board of Education curriculum to these children. Why not? Because it isn't relevant to their lives. What is relevant to their lives? This hospital. It's their world, and it's a frightening place. They're left alone here without their parents. They're taken for tests and into operating rooms without ever being told why. They feel isolated from the rest of the hospital, and they're lonely. And you know what it's like to be lonely, Miss Klein. Yes, Doctor, I do. What do you propose? I want to give them a sense of togetherness, of belonging. For their sake or for yours? Does that matter? No, I suppose not. Then do I have your permission? Why not? I may be persuaded to take the tour myself. You know we've got a veritable children's zoo down in the animal lab? You're a remarkable man, doctor. You, Miss Klein, you're going to be a tiger. Sit down and have some corned beef. Remember last week we decided it would be a good idea if we all talked about the kinds of feelings we have here in the hospital? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today I'd like to talk about a feeling called loneliness. Now everybody feels lonely sometime or other. And when we're lonely, what else do we feel? Afraid. Afraid, yes. What else? Mad. Angry, yes. And what else? Well, I feel like I'm helpless. Helpless. We all know that feeling. Well, that's why it's important for us to care about each other. You see, because if one person cares about another person, then we're twice as strong. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, nine of us. So if we all care about each other, how many times strong are we? Eight. No. Nine, dummy. Nine, that's right. Like a gang. We could have our own gang. Well, we could, but first we have to feel together. So, Harold, you take Jim Jim's hand. Jim Jim, you... Uh, Prenez le main. If you oh, Okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay, you three. Can you hold my finger? Yes. Yeah. Good. All right, uh, Harold, you take Stanley's other hand, and, and Stanley, you take Tracy's hand. Lex? Come on, Lex. We need you. Come on. Good. Now we're all together. Like a family. Like a family. Miss Klein? Yes? Dr. Kellerman wants to see Tracy. Tracy? I can walk. I have to take you down in the chair, Tracy. I mean, it's the rules. Hey, maybe you get to go home. You think so? I bet you. I took a whole bunch of tests this week. That's it, man. You're going home. Good luck, Tracy. for togetherness. No, not necessarily. Look, I was going to tell you this later, but, uh, Lex, I talked to Dr. Kellerman, and he says that pretty soon we can all go on a tour of the hospital. All right. All right. Tour. All right. No kidding? No kidding. Dr. Horton, call you Dr. Horton, call you Julio? What? Do you think Miss Klein is pretty? Well, she's okay. Do you think I'm pretty? Yes. Do you think I'm sexy? <laughs> How should I know? I was watching this movie on television, and this older man falls madly in love with a teenage girl. So? You smell? I'm going down. How old are you? I'm 20. I wonder what it feels like. To be 20? To have somebody in love with you. Oh, I see. If I stay in this hospital, I'll never find out. Come on, Tracy, you're going home pretty soon. Not until my leg gets better. Dr. Horton, call your service. Dr. Horton, call your service. Julio? 
What? Would you kiss me? What? Would you kiss me? What for? To see what it feels like. Oh, come on, Tracy. You're crazy. I'll give you some money. Hey, I don't kiss people for money. Listen, when you get better, we'll talk about it some more, okay? Julio, I'm scared. There is nothing to be afraid of. Very good. How are you guys doing? Okay. Not motorcycles. Work. Hello, can I help you? Hello, I'm Alex Markham, Lex's father. How do you do? Come in. Oh. I uh, just flew in from Athens and Dr. Kellerman gave me permission to come up and see Lex. How is he? Yes, he's looking fine. I'll go bring him up. Uh, no, uh, don't disturb him. I can come back later. Oh, no, he'll want to see you. Dr. Wilson, call the pathology lab. Dr. Wilson, call the pathology lab. Hello, Lex. Hello, Pop. It's good to see you. How are you? Okay. Oh, you're looking good. I'll leave you two alone. No! no. All right. Uh, you all were doing your thing in there. Why don't I go down and talk to Dr. Kellerman and then come back later and have lunch, the three of us? Oh, I really uh, can't. No reallys. I'll uh, be back at noon. See you later, Lex. Bye. Listen to me. Tracy. No. Tracy, this is going to make you well. No, you're you're going to be able to. I don't lie to my patients, Tracy. You know that. No, please. Please, Tracy, listen to me now. You're going to be able to walk. And you're going to be able to ride. You're going to be able to swim. No. I hate the world. I hate my life. And most of all, I hate you. <laughs> Here we are. Now, let's see, we have the uh, oh, chicken topsy for you. <laughs> and uh, the fried lead burger for me. And the uh, salad, local, with the surgical dressing for you. Thank you. And bon appetit. Well, uh, Dr. Kellerman tells me you're really improving, Lex. I was going to ask him uh, whether I could take you out to the beach house for a day. Would you like that? Yeah. Uh, we have a house on Fire Island. Lex used to spend all of his summers there until... Mm -hmm. How long will you be in New York, Mr. Markham? About ten days. Dr. Kellerman tells me you're in the diplomatic service. Yes. That must be an interesting life. If you like living abroad. Well, I've never lived anywhere but here. Greece is a very beautiful place. Lex, I've really missed you. Listen, they have some marvelous gooey chocolate dessert up there. Why don't I go get some? Uh, I can get it myself. hospitals half of his life like strangers he needs you he hasn't let me touch him since he was four 
It's important to try. You don't think I don't want to? I wouldn't give up. He seems to trust you. I can tell by the way he looks at you. Miss Klein, would you have dinner with me tonight? Oh, to talk about Lex. I'm sorry, I'm tied up tonight. Hmm. Well, I'll try again. Diplomats always get what they want. And if they don't? They just change what they want. Is that diplomacy? I've been doing that all my life. <laughs> Dr. Jordan wanted wing Dr. Jordan wanted wing Come on. I just thought I'd say good night. It's 10.30. Don't you ever go home? Don't you? This is my home, Miss Klein. You should be out with a young man who can tell beautiful lies and make love to you. Just turn one down. Well, after you've been around the children a while longer, you'll learn to say yes. Nobody, nobody has a moment to waste, Miss Klein. Would you like a drink? No, I don't. Don't drink. <laughs> That's a pity. I was married to a woman who didn't drink. She didn't do anything wrong. She was a saint. Saint Zelda. She was always forgiving me for sins that I wasn't even capable of committing. You're no longer married? No. <laughs> no, she divorced me. I was having an affair with a hospital. Do you have any children? Two daughters. They hate my guts. Why? Why? Well, because sometimes uh, I can be pretty rotten. Well, it's late. I've got to be going. Good night. Well, I was hoping you'd stay. I was planning to seduce you with a pastrami sandwich. You should eat better. Carl Sandberg once wrote, Let a joy kill you. I don't think he was talking about pastrami. Miss Klein? Yes. You're doing a beautiful job. Thank you. Spend a little extra time with Tracy Davenport. Something wrong? We're going to take her leg tomorrow morning. Oh, God. Does she know? Yes, I, uh, I told her today. That's... It's one of the more interesting jobs that a surgeon gets to perform. I'm sorry. So am I, Miss Klein. So am I. Oh, excuse me. It seems everybody keeps late hours around here. Yes, but for different reasons. Good night, Miss Klein. One of the nurses found it unlocked this morning, but it was closed. Now, I checked, and nobody in authority has been in it for 48 hours, so who knows? And besides, there's a spare key in the desk drawer. What's missing, Lisa? A full vial of phenobarbital. Who would do such a thing? What about Julio? No, Julio's a parolee from the state reformatory. Anyone could have broken in there. We'll say nothing of this to anyone. Miss Klein, keep an eye on your children. If anyone starts to nod off, let me know. My children? We've had nine-year-old junkies on this ward. Babies who were born addicted. How is Tracy, Doctor? We're going to operate this morning. Do the other kids know? They have their grapevine. They don't show it. Well, it'll show up. Harold will be a little more withdrawn. Stanley will bully the others. Lexi will be more protective. And your job is to make it all seem like part of a marvelous adventure instead of some terrible, squeaking, practical joke that God plays on little children. You've really taken the time to know them, haven't you? I treat children as crime, not diseases. Dr. Welch, you call the college, 
Okay, our first lesson today, kids, is thumping. Does everybody know how to thump? All right, the first thing you do is you go and you put your hands like this and you go. That's it, that's it. See you for dinner tonight? I really uh, no reallys. I'll see you later, kids. Take it easy, Leg. Remember, keep thumping. All right, all right, all right. I hate to break up the menagerie, but we have a lot of work to do to catch up. Dr. Kellerman, they are waiting in surgery. Dr. Kellerman. Dr. Kellerman, Dr. Kellerman. Stanley, you take charge. Please do the things on the board. Okay, get out a piece of paper and do the work on the board. I'd like you to come back to class now. She's going to be in surgery for a long time. All right, when you're ready. How is your blood pressure? Okay. What? First question. How is your blood Don't be afraid, Tracy. Don't be afraid. Thank you. You're welcome. Lexi! Take your hands off her. I don't want you touching her. What are you doing in here anyway? What is it? Are you all right? What happened? Lex, tell me what happened. I'll tell you what happened. I found him in the Davenport girl's room with his hands all over her. Miss Foyerman, you have a filthy mind. I'm sure he was just trying to comfort her. With his hand under the covers? Lex? Lex, speak up. Where did you get those? Tracy had them. I rolled under the covers. It's half empty. She must have taken them. Miss Clown, what's 
What's wrong? Is it Tracy? Uh, it's nothing, boys. Come on outside. CA on Come on. Five Kellerman thinks we got her pumped out in time. Good. I'd like to apologize for what I said this morning. I, I want to be friends. I'm not looking for friendship, Miss Klein. Not in this place. It's too painful. Then I'm sorry for you. You do better to feel sorry for yourself. Why? Oh, I was like you when I came here. I wanted to love the children. I wanted them to love me. I became attached to them. And then I learned it was more than I could endure. If you want to stay here, you have to shut off your emotions. If that happens, maybe it's better not to stay. Well, maybe it is. Why did you stay? Do you really want to know? Yes. Well, I was a young woman when I came here. Dr. Kellerman took me out of nursing school and I helped him set up this department. You're fortunate. He's a wonderful man. Yeah, I thought so too. I was very pretty then, if you can believe that. I was engaged to a nice young man. We were going to go to Europe. What happened? Dr. Kellerman persuaded me that my life was here. He made me feel very important to him. Very important. We had a relationship. It died like everything else around here. Well, he can be very seductive when he wants something. Why are you telling me all this? Look at me, Miss Klein. Take a good look, because I am what you will become if you stay here. A tired old maid who can't even love anymore. When they die, these beautiful children, they take pieces of your life with them and you never get them back. So get out before it's too late. Jordan, you're wanted in Wing D. Nurse Jordan, you're wanted in Wing D. Hello. Hi, I didn't know you were still here. Yes, I was in playing chess with Lex in his room. Oh, good. He seems to be coming out of hiding. Except for his concern about that girl. Tracy. Yes. Yes, he is. I'm glad. When are you going to come out of hiding? What? Well, ever since we've met, I've been trying to reach you, and except for dinner the other night, I mean, I'm, are you afraid of me? Is there something wrong? I'm really a very nice person. No, please don't think that it's you. Well, then what is it? My job here is very demanding. Oh, well, in that case, uh, are you free again tonight? You can't be that lonely. <laughs> you know, you mustn't say things like that. Sorry. All those years of practice as a high school wallflower. How about a quiet movie? Sounds nice, but I'm really exhausted. Hmm. You know, you need a vacation. <laughs> I've only been working two weeks. I've got a marvelous idea. Oh? Are you engaged or married or in love or anything like that? In love. With your son. <laughs> Perfect. Then that makes you eligible for my one-day, all-expense, Fire Island dream vacation. <laughs> I'm very serious. I'm going out there this Sunday for the day. I'd like you to come along with me. I don't know, Alex. It, it's very nice this time of year. On the beach, you can just sit there and look at the ocean, and I promise you, I will not make a pass. Well, Lex will be expecting you. Well, we can get the last ferry in in time to see him. I promised him I'd pick up his shell collection anyway. Please, come with me. All right. Good.
Well, you sound like you've never been to the beach before. Well, never this time of year. Everything's so much more vivid. I seem to see things I've never seen before. No, no, we seem to have collected most of them. Let's look at our treasures. Okay, we've got a fortune here. Got uh, one sand dollar, three uh, clamshells, huh, a fishing lure for you. Thank you. Ah. What's that? That is an egg sack from a female shark. Oh, how sad. Why? She'll never get to see her babies. Oh, well, they eat them. Oh, how awful. <laughs> Speaking of that, why don't you heat up some soup and then I'll poke the fire. All right. I love this old house. Yeah, I used to spend all my summers here. Lex used to spend them here, too, until he... That's sick. If I had a place like this, I'd never leave. Nice. The ferry leaves in an hour. You know, I just don't understand how you can go back and face those children day after day, knowing that... I don't want to think about that now, Alex. Good. Then let's think about us. We could stay. Lexi's expecting us. Oh, now, that's only one visiting hour. He'll be hurt. Melanie, we do have our lives to think about, too. Alex... Are you afraid? Yes. I've been afraid all my life. Afraid to love. Afraid to live. Don't be. Soup is burning. lips were like red wine and honey and the taste of you burnt my mouth with its sweetness Amy Law don't make me fall in love with you Alex holy smoke it's 15 minutes we gotta get that ferry oh you get the stuff. I'll, I'll poke out the fire. I think we've got it. Oh, let the shell. Oh. I'm sorry. I love you. So soon? And as your children have taught you, there isn't a moment to waste. Especially if we're going to get that ferry. <laughs> Miss Klein? Yes? Could you come in for a minute, please? Uh, close the door. Is anything wrong? Sit down. Tracy Davenport is dead. A combination of anesthesia, post-operative shock, along with an overdose of barbiturates. Her heart just couldn't take it. We tried everything we could. We are so impotent. When did it happen? Last night. How's Lex? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. 
He's gone into what could become a complete withdrawal. How serious is that? He's in his room in a fetal position. If somebody doesn't snap the kid out of it, he may never come out of it. Can I see him? Please. I've tried. I try to save the girl, too. I even prayed. How do you go through this day after day, year after year? Reason has moons. To quote a favorite poet, reason has moons, but moons not hers. Lie mirrored on her sea, confounding her astronomers, but oh, delighting me. It's a poetic way of saying I don't know, but there must be a reason. Sorry I wasn't here last night. He tried to call you. He called his father's hotel. I was out of town. It would have helped Lexi if we'd been here, wouldn't it? If Grandma had wheels, she'd be a wagon. Go on in and see what you can do. See, it's Melanie. Lex, I know how you feel about Tracy. We all loved her very much. And it hurts to think that she's gone. It wasn't anybody's fault. Lexi, I know you can hear me and I want to comfort you. Please, won't you let me? Lex. Do you remember when we all sat around in a circle and held hands? Remember how good that felt? Won't you please let me touch you, Lexi? Please? No. Why not, Lex? Why not? If you touch someone, she dies. Lexi, is that what you think? That Tracy died because you touched her? That's not true. Lex, it's all right to touch someone. Especially if you love them. And it's all right to cry, too, Lex. when you're hurt inside. Everybody cries, Lex. I never cry. Everybody cries. When you're sad and lonely, everybody cries. Even angels cry. Dr. Blake, call your service. Dr. Blake, call your service. I found a message at the hotel.
Lex. I'm sorry we weren't here last night. We missed the ferry. I want to spend more time with you. I really do. Lex, how would you like to come home and live? With me and Melanie. I'm asking her to marry me. You mean she'd live with us? Yes. In her own house? Yes. Lynn? She'd be my mother. Yeah, she'd be your mother. Oh. I'll see you later, Lex. That was unfair, Alex. I know, I know, but I meant it. Not in front of Lex. You see how much you meant to him? You didn't give me a chance. Look, I'm asking you to marry me. It'll give you a chance to have a life of your own. You won't have to come here and face this every day. I need you. I want you. I don't know, Alex. I have to, I have, to have time to think. All right. Lex and I are leaving for Europe next week. Please, say yes. For me. For Lex. Come in. Excuse me. Oh, something wrong? Can Lexi Markham go home? Why? His father has asked me to marry him. Mazel tov. Thank you. I take it this is a resignation? Yes. When are you leaving? Next week, Alex has his work. And you, what about your work? I want to live a normal life. Well, I can't blame you for wanting to get out of here. I envy him. He'll make a fine nurse for his son. That was unkind. I told you I could be rotten sometimes. Why did you say it? Because I happen to think it's true. Do you know why Alex Markham came here? Because Lexi's getting better. He came to take him He's home. He's here because I phoned him in Athens and told him his son had only a couple of months to live. Lexi. Yes, that's right, Lexi. When it hits a vital organ, he's dead. But he seems so much better. His outlook is better, not his health. Markham asked if his son could spend his last few months at home. I said only if he could find a dedicated person to care for the boy. You place a very low value on me. A very high value. I don't want to see you used by a man who doesn't love you. Why should you care? Because I have very deep feelings about you. Oh. You don't believe me? No. How do I know you're not a user, too, doctor? After all, a good pediatric teacher is hard to come by. Just like a good pediatric nurse. Dr. Blake, emergency. Dr. Blake, emergency. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Klein. Well, what's the occasion? Lexi says you're going away with him and his father. Oh. Well, until I do, we're all going to continue to work together, okay? Okay. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, Miss Klein. This is Mary Ann. Hello, Mary Ann. She's going to be with us for a while. Short while. Come here, sweetie. Don't be afraid. I'm Miss Klein, and I'm going to be your teacher. 
And all these boys and girls are going to be just like your brothers and sisters. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have a puppy. Oh, what's his name? Oliver. Well, maybe one of these days Dr. Kellerman will let you bring Oliver for a visit, hmm? Miss Klein, they don't let puppies in here. Besides, who wants to see your puppy? I do, so just let her alone. Or what? You get a karate chop in the head. All right, I think we're ready to begin again. Let's all gather around the table, huh? Uh, would you take Marianne and show her where the table is? Thank you. Before you say anything, I want you to know that I love you. What? I'm not going to marry you. Hmm. Do you love me? If you're not going to marry me, I'm trying to understand that. We love each other, Alex, but we're not in love, are we? Well, we're not children, well, I mean, does it have to be one of those romances where only major poets experience it? Yes. For me, it does. But why? Because if I've learned anything from these children, I've learned that I have only this one life, this one precious gift of life. And if I don't try to make some kind of poem out of it, then I've wasted it. But do you think being my wife is wasting it? I have to be more than somebody's wife, Alex. You have to be more than somebody's husband. You have a job, a purpose. I need that, too. <laughs> Can't you find it somewhere else? No. No, it's here with these children. We'll miss you, Lex and I. And I'll miss you. What am I going to tell him? Tell him. Tell him that the other children need me. That they need someone to love them and protect them after he's gone. You think he'll understand that? I don't know, Alex. Say goodbye to her, Lex. She's waiting. Please, Lex. you. Just the way the other kids need me. Can I come back in a few months? In a few months. Game? Oh, come on, Klein. You know it's against the rules to bring a dog in here. Oh, Dr. Kellerman, that is not a dog. That is an audiovisual teaching device named Oliver. Let me see that thing. Oh, oh by God, Miss Klein, you're right. <laughs> here, carry on. All right! Yay! 
Well, we're two of a kind. What kind is that? The kind the children need most. We fall in love with them and they break our hearts. What made you decide to stay? I know that it wasn't me, though God knows I tried every trick in the book. No, it wasn't you, completely. What was it, then? Well, to quote the poet, reason has moons, but moons not hers lie mirrored on her sea. Right. See you later. Confounding her astronomers, but oh, delighting me. Oh, oh, Oliver. <laughs> we don't do that, Oliver. with Spiro Agnew. <laughs> Julie Summers represents the irresistible intriguing in initials in the governor and JJ. Monty Hall is the star of Let's Make a Deal, a show that's a favorite of housewives and husbands who are home with a hangover <laughs> and out of work actors. To present the next awards here, are Julie Summers and Monty Hall. that introduction, I'm concerned for our industry. I just saw my Saturday night rating and there are 27 million unemployed actors. I think we better get on with the awards. Okay. There's a lot of nervous people out there. That's right. I have a hunch there's so many prayers being said right now that Billy Graham would have a tough time getting through. <laughs> now, for outstanding single performance by an actress in a leading role, the nominees are Dame Edith Evans for David Copperfield. Shirley Jones for Silent Night, Lonely Night. Patty Duke for My Sweet Charlie World Premiere Movie. Thank you. And the winner is, in Los Angeles, Patty Duke for My Sweet Charlie. I know you're over there somewhere. You, Mom, happy birthday. Uh, I've also been taught not to uh, say thank you for too long. But the best words I've ever learned were hello. Enthusiasm. And thank you.
name is Daisy Fresh, and this is my little girl. We're here to help a friend of ours. And I'm here to tell all you folks about completely new, fresh, ready roll-on. Here is a truly different deodorant. See? It even looks different. I can't it stands on its head. That means the ball is always moist. The lotion actually flows on at a touch. Instantly and smoothly. You try new, fresh, ready roll-on. You'll like it. Ready to sing that fresh song, Daisy? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Fresh, stick, fresh, green, fresh, ready, roll on two. Layers of fresh deodorant, perfect for you. Thank you. I hope I see you real soon again. Well, if it isn't my favorite girl, Daisy Fresh. Could you help me with a very important job, please? Sure. Anything you want. I want to sing our, uh, our Fresh song for an introduction to Beverly Bentley. Well, for an introduction to Beverly, I'd sing it myself. Could you accompany me on the piano? Of course I can. Are you sure you know it? Sure. Here we go. One. Two. Win a prize. Let's go in. What wonderful prizes you can get. I'm going to win a watch for you. The penny in the slot and... Look at the prizes go round and round. Bracelets, cars, harmonicas. This lever moves the bucket from side to side. This lever moves the bucket up and down. Here goes. You've almost got the watch. You've got it. Down the chute, and out it comes. You just made it. The timer says finished. Kids, this is a toy you've got to have. Remco's Coney Island Penny Machine. Only $12.98 at your favorite toy store. It comes complete with a giant bag of wonderful toy prizes. Remember, every boy wants a Remco toy. And so do girls. Santa Monica, the Academy Awards presentation is highlighted with the announcement of the best picture. Producer Sam Spiegel is warmly congratulated by Olivia de Havilland upon the naming of Lawrence of Arabia for the top film Oscar. <laughs> Sophia Loren happily presents Gregory Peck with his Oscar for the best performance by an actor in To Kill a Mockingbird. It's the first time he's walked off with the coveted award. Joan Crawford stands in for winner Anne Bancroft as Maximilian Schell presents the Best Actress Oscar. Miss Bancroft's co-star in Miracle Worker, Patty Duke, wins the Best Supporting Actress Award. George Chakaris makes the presentation to Miss Duke, who at 16 is the youngest performer in Academy history to win a major Oscar. The Best Supporting Actor winner is announced by Rita Marino. And the winner is Ed The first...
Hey, you okay? Yeah, sure. I'm really sorry. Um, we were messing around with basketball. I was supposed to catch it. Oh, oh, it's all right. It just scared me. I've never seen you around here. Oh, I'm Michael Reynolds. This is my kid brother, Brian. Hi. We're just moving in. Oh, are, are you going to live here? Yeah. Yeah, we just moved in from Oak Ridge. Are, are you going to go to Madison High? Uh-huh. Start Monday morning. Oh, that's great. I'll see you there. Brian! Are you all right? Oh, sure. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry. I can't turn my back on you for a minute, Brian. I saw you knock that girl down. It was an accident. Well, it wouldn't have happened if you'd been unloading the car the way you were supposed to. See what happens when you don't... Listen, it really was an accident. I know, it'll be okay. Listen, here, let me help you with this. Hey, I don't even know your name. Oh, it's Nancy, Nancy Parks. I live just down the street. Well, Nancy Parks, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay. Five minutes and you're already causing problems. I didn't mean to, Mom. Oh, no, you never mean to. It's gonna be just like Oak Ridge. Never minding me, never listening. Uh, I'm sorry, Mom. To do to you to teach you to listen to me. Don't hit me, Mom, please. No, Mommy, please. Don't hit me, Mom. And I blew my clothes allowance this month on a fantastic sweater. So what do I wear to the prom? Well, you better wear something besides the sweater. I need a pair of designer jeans. Ah, uh, I can't afford them. Jeans? Parks, has your brain stopped functioning? You can't wear jeans to the prom. But with my new sweater, I'd look great. Look, the time has come. You've got to get a dress. Just one. Everyone will forgive you. Dress, jeans, it doesn't make any difference because I can't afford either one. Excuse me for mentioning this, but maybe all this worry is just a little superfluous. What do you mean? I mean, friend, you don't even have a date for the prom yet. <laughs> yes. What's that supposed to mean? You got somebody on the hook. Okay, quiet down. Let's get started. Hold it down to a dull roar. Thank you. I have an announcement. Now, you better write this down, those of you who care to exercise that basic skill. One week from today, we will take a field trip to County Hospital. Now, the reason for... Ah, uh, sorry I'm late. I, I'm new here. I couldn't find that room. Are you uh, Michael Reynolds? Yes, sir. Well, sit down. Necessary to bring slips. Spill it, Parks. No slip, no trip. As I say, this will be public transportation. We'll start out with bus 23. Hi. Welcome to Madison High. Thanks. I feel like I'm in a foreign country. Oh, that's no problem. I happen to be a fantastic tour guide. Where's your next class? Uh, wherever the language lab is. Oh, I'm going right by it. Come on. Thanks. Hey, do you think you can show me where the gym is? I'd like to talk to the basketball coach. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I know it'd be tough coming in during mid-semester, but I'd, I'd really like to go for a spot on the team. You're sure tall enough. Oh, yeah, I'd take after my dad. Well, Coach Egan just happens to be a friend of mine. Uh, I cover some sports for the school paper. You do? You write sports? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Nothing, I think it's great. You're a sports writer, huh? That's all right. Well, uh, if you meet me outside the cafeteria at noon, I'll take you to Coach Egan, okay? Okay.
All right, Reynolds, come here. Well, what do you think? Michael, welcome aboard. Practice is from three to five every afternoon. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, you better get going. Fifth period starts in five minutes. Yeah, that's great. Hey, what's wrong? Aren't you happy? Three to five every day. Yeah? I just remembered. My mom starts work in a couple days. She's counting on me to take care of my little brother after school. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, listen, there's got to be a way. We'll figure something out. And when you get to this corner, there's the house. So, you think you can do this by yourself? Yeah. Good. How was your first day of school? Okay. Teacher give you any homework? I forgot to bring him the book. Oh, Brian, what is the matter with you? You bring that book home from now on, do you hear me? I brought you this. What is it? Brian, that is terrific. You know, you really have a knack for drawing. Hey, Ma. Hi, Michael. This is uh, this is Nancy Parks. Remember, we sort of knocked her off her bike the other day. Oh yeah. This is my mom. Hi, hi. Listen, Ma, I got great news. I'm in the basketball team. Oh, Michael, that's terrific. The coach couldn't believe his jump shot. Uh, practice is after school, and I know that's a problem, but we figured out a way. Because we know you have to go to work and Brian is here. But Nancy would love to have the job. Because I'm broke all the time. And I could get a job on the weekends. To pay you back for hiring me. Well, it certainly looks as if you two have it all worked out. As long as it's okay with you and Bri. Well, Brian can be quite a handful. Oh, well, I'm really good with kids. I babysit all the time. Well... You don't have to sell me. I think it's a terrific idea. All right. Okay with you, big guy? Yeah. I'm going to do an article for the school paper on Michael. Yeah, Nancy's a sports writer. Isn't that something? A writer, really? Hmm. I always wanted to be a writer. Then I got married and... Well, I can't have everything, I guess. Hey, why don't you come on in for a soda? Oh, sure. supposed to be here 10 minutes ago. Hey, is anything wrong? It's Brian. Hey, hey, Brian, you okay? your first day? Awful. I've never had a job before. I thought being a telephone operator was going to be easy. I feel like I need an extra set of hands. Must be hard. Uh, listen, I put your casserole in the oven. You'll feel better after you eat and relax. Thanks, but I'm not eating. Why not? I've got to get rid of some of this weight. I'm not going to eat again until I absolutely can't stand it anymore. Sounds kind of extreme. Well, that's the only way I can diet. All or nothing. Probably die if I did that. <laughs> well, I gotta go. Brian's watching TV. 
You know, he seemed a, a little down when he got home from school. Well, that figures. He's a moody kid. Well, see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Okay. Scared me to death. Sorry. Why are you sneaking up on me like that? I wasn't. I was going to set the table. Well, it's not time to set the table. Go do your homework. Well, go on. I can't. What do you mean you can't? So I forgot to bring home the book. I told you you had to bring it today. I did. I mean, I meant to. You're lying again. Just like your father. I never know when you're telling the truth anymore. Honest, Mom, I'll set the table for you. I said I didn't want the table set. You don't have to do any work for me. I'll do it all. I said leave the table. You see? Do you see what happens when you don't listen to me? Do you? I had it with you, Brian. You see what happened because you don't listen to me? I have had it. Do you hear me? Yeah, especially that new forward. You had a chance to use your man-to-man -man defense on him yet? Come on, we're just good friends. Oh, in other words, he hasn't asked you to the prom yet. No. All right, good workout. Hit the showers. Hey, Michael, come here for a minute. Listeners, this uh, reporter that wants to talk to you. Hi, Michael. Hey, Brian, what are you doing here? Nancy brought me. She's going to write about you in the school paper. Okay, okay, I'll see you in a minute. Pretty neat, huh? Come on, let yourself go. It's okay to like him, you know. So why don't you ask him to the prom? No, I don't want to do that. For crying out loud, Parks, this is not the Victorian era. I asked Buddy. It's perfectly acceptable for a woman to ask a man for a date. Oh, I know, I know, you're right. It's just hard hard for a guy to just give it a try the worst that can happen is he'll say no well maybe i will come on brian it's about time Sorry, I kept waiting. No problem. So, what do you need to know? Uh, well, I've started to lay out my story, and I just need to fill in a couple of things. Okay. Shoot. Okay, uh, you are a forward on your Oakwich team, right? Yeah, since my sophomore year. Well, by the way you sink those baskets, I'll bet you were quite a star. We were lucky to get you. Thanks. How is your Oak Ridge team doing? Terrific. Oh, we were on a seven-game winning streak. Mm. Hit a real shot at the All-City title. You must have hated to move. I'm used to it. You couldn't even stay till the end of the year? Uh, well, my mom was real edgy to move. Uh, our house sold. So what do you think of Madison? Well, it's a lot bigger than my old school at Oak Ridge, but I really like the people. I'm glad. Tell me, how did you get started on a career as a basketball star? I don't know. It seems like I was always out in the driveway, you know, shooting hoops. My dad and I used to pit together a lot. Mm -hmm. He taught me everything. Well, before the divorce. 
Sounds like you kind of miss him. Well, I don't miss the arguments I had. So, what else do you want to know about basketball? Uh, well, I guess I have everything I need for the article, but um, there is another question that uh, uh, Judy told me to ask. What's that? Uh, well, it's not about basketball exactly, but uh, I wanted to ask if you, uh, 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 if you, uh, if, if you're, in, if you're in the starting lineup tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, I am. That's great. We'll have to come and watch. Okay. Tonight, I have a real surprise for you. What is it? Well, I thought that since your mom has to work late tonight, that you and I could have a date. A date? Yeah. How'd you like to come to school with me and watch uh, your brother play in his first basketball game with Madison High? No kidding? No kidding? Well, as soon as you finish your dinner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it was an accident. Don't worry, it's no problem. When I was your age, I used to spill my milk so much that my mom would only pour it in an inch at a time. I wish you were my mom. You already have a mom, silly. Now, come on, take off your shirt and I'll get you a dry one. Hey, come on, off with the shirt. We don't want to be late. Brian, what happened to you? I fell down. Must have been a pretty bad fall. I guess I'm pretty clumsy. That's what my mom says. Well, come on. Let's get this on. Gotta go cheer for Michael. quiet during the second half. I'll be here till your mom gets home, okay? Um, I came back because I want you to go to the victory celebration with me. Oh, yeah, well, great, but I can't go until your mom gets home. Yeah, I know. Well, she should be home any minute. Uh, listen, I wanted to ask you something anyway. What's that? Um, well, I know it's probably too late and everything, and you're probably already going with somebody else. Someone else? Yeah, to the prom. But just in case, I thought maybe we could go together or something. I'd love to. You would? You're back. We're going to the party, Ma. We won. Yeah, Michael was a star. He scored 15 points. Oh, that's wonderful. Bye-bye. See you later, Ma. Have yourselves a good time.
Now this is the pediatrics wing. We can accommodate 60 patients in here. They range in age from 1 to 13. These kids are here for different reasons. A lot of them recovering from operations. Hi, Dr. Gage. How's it going, Matthew? I'm going home today. Good for you. Are you coming to my party? Sure. I'll come back in a few minutes. Oh, great. Housekeeping to Four West. Hi, Jessica. How are you feeling today? I see you got invited to Matthew's party. Have a good time. Save me some ice cream. Dr. Gage, uh, what happened to that girl you just talked to? Jessica is a battered child. Her father beat her so badly she had to have an operation to remove a blood clot on her brain. It's terrible. Yes. Child abuse is a terrible problem. There are more than a million reports of child abuse every year in the United States. And once every four hours, one of those kids dies from being battered. What kind of parents would do that? Well, they aren't hardened criminals. They're the kind of people who get swamped with pressures they just can't handle. And they lash out. They're sick people who need help. But what about the kids? Can't they tell somebody they're being hurt? Sometimes they do. But often they think it's their fault. And some children protect their parents. Maybe because they're afraid of what their parents will do. When we asked Jessica what happened to her, she told us she fell down. I fell down. You okay? Is anything wrong? I don't know. Maybe. But I gotta find out for sure. Oh, here, try this one. Okay. No, it doesn't fit, it's too small. Brian? Yeah? I want to ask you something. Hmm? Do you remember the other night when we changed your shirt? Did your mother make those bruises on your back? I didn't make him tell me. Oh, I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to do? He, he got so upset. What a mess. And, and I'm scared to talk to Mrs. Reynolds. I, I, if I tell her what I think, she might really get mad. That could mean more trouble for Brian. I know. And when she came home tonight, I, I was so uptight, I didn't even know how to act. I, I just kept thinking of all those bruises. What do you think ought to be done? Well, I, I don't want to start any trouble. I mean, maybe it's none of my business. Nancy, if what you suspect is true, then Brian is in real danger. It is your business. But I didn't ask for this mess. Why do I have to do anything about it? Come on, you know the answer to that. If things are as serious as you say, you've got to take some action. You've got a responsibility. Wait a minute. Maybe it's not really happening. I mean, there's Michael. He lives right there. If Brian were really being hurt, wouldn't you think he would do something about it? I don't know. Okay, well, that's what I'll do. I'll talk to Michael tomorrow. Thanks. 
And I thought that I, I was just imagining things, because if that were going on, you'd know about it, right? Yeah, I guess. And you'd do something about it. Look, look, you're making a big deal about it, okay? Just drop it, all right? Well, are you saying it's okay, then? Brian's not being hurt? Michael! Did you see those bruises on him? Oh, for crying out loud. This is just like in Oak Ridge. Everybody's making a big deal about a couple of bruises. You mean this was going on before when you lived in Oak Ridge? Look, can we just get off it? You knew this was going on all along? Maybe you ought to think about it from my mom's point of view, all right? She's got it kind of rough right now with the new job and the move and everything. She's under a lot of pressure, so she gets upset. But, Michael, maybe, maybe that's why she needs help. She doesn't need help, especially not from you. None of us need your help, Nancy. Just do your job and get off our backs. You leave me alone, leave my mom alone, and you flat out forget about going to that dance because I don't want to have anything to do with you. And so I, I told Michael because I, I figured he'd do something. Only now he's ticked off at me and he broke our date for the prom. Ah, just made a mess out of everything. I'm afraid it's only going to mean more trouble for Brian. What am I going to do? Wow. Hey, that doctor at the hospital, the one who gave us the tour. Maybe you could talk to her. I mean, you know, she knew a lot about it. Yeah. That, that's a great idea. Um, I'm going to call and see if I can go there at lunchtime. Uh, but don't tell anybody, okay? Tell him what? And so after we were here the other day, I decided to do a paper for health class on child abuse. Good for you. Have a seat. Thanks. I have some pamphlets here that will give you a background. Oh, okay. Uh, but what I really wanted to know was, uh, what would somebody do if uh, they thought something like this was going on? Well, that's a tough one. Some people don't want to get involved. They hope somebody else will take care of it. Yeah, I can imagine. But there are things that can be done. Oh, yeah? Yes. There's an agency called Children's Protective Services. Anybody can report a suspected case of child abuse any time of the day or night. And they can do it anonymously. You mean not even give your name? That's right. If there's even a chance that a child is being abused, that child deserves protection. It's just not okay to hurt a kid. Okay, so what would happen? They'd have a trained social worker in that house to investigate within 24 hours. That's good. Um, what if uh, there was someone else, like an older brother? Wouldn't you think they'd want to do something? Well, yeah, but a lot of times they don't. Why not? Because it seems like too big a problem because it feels like they're betraying their parents. They can't handle it, so they try to pretend it's not happening. Uh, hello, uh, yes, is, is this the Children's Protective Service? I'd like to uh, report a case of um, possible child abuse. Reynolds, uh, 113 Maple Avenue. Well, I, I babysit. Brian, he's eight years old. Yesterday.
Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Pretty tough phone call, huh? This feels so crummy. I'm not sure that was the right thing to do. I am. You made the right choice, not the easiest. It took a whole lot of courage. And I'm proud of you. What if they find out that I made the call? I'm late now, Ma. I don't have time to eat breakfast. You mean I made all these eggs and now they're going to waste? Oh, well, you're Brian Kinnear. No, I can't do that. I'm trying to diet. Here. You eat. I don't want eggs. My tummy feels fine. You eat these eggs or you're going to get it. We can't afford to waste food. Forget it. Forget it. I'll eat the eggs. Hello. Yes, my mom's here. It's Brian's teacher. Yes? This is Mrs. Reynolds. You want to meet with me? What for? What kind of problems? He's slipping behind? Well, couldn't we just talk about this on the phone? I work. Oh, Brian's always been withdrawn. It's just the way he is. Well, I'll see about getting time off from work. I'll let you know. Goodbye. Well, you're at it again, troublemaker. Troublemakers. You're no good. Either one of you, just like your father. Get yourselves in trouble and you expect me to come and get you out. Don't you? I'm sorry, Mom. I don't want to hear how sorry you are. I'm tired of hearing how sorry you are. That's not going to pay for the day's work I'm going to lose because of you. We're almost broke now and it's all your fault because you're bad. You are a bad, bad Stop girl. it, Mom! What are you doing? Let go of me! I'm not going to let you hurt Brian anymore. You what? Look, I've had it with this. Nancy's right about you. You're sick. Nancy? What does she have to do with this? Get your coat on. Where are you going? I'm taking him out of here. You're not going to hit him anymore because we won't be here. Michael! Michael, you get back here! Michael, you get in this house! Brian! Wilcox. Yes, I know it's after nine o'clock. Um, I was just too sick to come to work today. I have a fever. It's, I forgot to call. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll definitely be there tomorrow. It's just a touch of the flu or something. It, yes, it won't happen again. I, I, I promise. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Mrs. Reynolds? Yes? I'm Louise Hawley with Children's Protective Services. Children... What do you want? Children's Protective Services. Yes. May I come in a minute? What is this all about? Our agency has received a report of possible child abuse involving you and your youngest son, Brian. Oh, uh, who would say such a thing? It was an anonymous report, but we're required to follow it up. I hope you understand. Is your son here now? No. No, he's in school. 
What school does he go to? Um, Ninth Street Elementary. But you can't see him now. Why not? Well, they're on a field trip today. Mrs. Reynolds, our regulations require that I see your son within 24 hours after a child abuse report. Look, this whole thing is ridiculous. Uh, whoever called you is crazy. If there is a problem, all we want to do is help in any way we can. You have my card. Please bring your son to my office this afternoon. This is none of your business. You get out of my house. Mrs. Reynolds, if you don't bring your son to my office this afternoon, I may have no choice but to involve the police. May I expect to see you? I'll see you after school. isn't going to make him materialize, you know. But why isn't he here? Maybe he found out that I made the phone call. Will you settle down? He'll show up. The basketball team is getting its yearbook pictures taken this afternoon. He wouldn't miss that. He'll be there. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, settle down. Uh, today we're going to review the papers of our field trip. Try to make that last as long as you can, okay, Brian? I've been making this hot chocolate last for an hour. It's ice cold. Can't we get another one? We don't have enough money, partner. Gotta save some for our next adventure. Adventure? Can we get to see another movie three times? If you gentlemen are finished, I'll clear your cups. Uh, we're not quite done. Look. If you want to order something else, I'll get it for you. Otherwise, we can use the booth for paying customers. Yeah, I can tell you need the table. You finished, Brian? Not quite. Thank you for your hospitality. Where are we going? Just a second, Bri. Where are you going? Hello, operator? Yeah, I'd like to make a collect call to Mr. Matthew Reynolds. Dad? Air code 411-555-4040. My name is Michael Reynolds. Yeah, okay, I'll try later. Thanks. No answer? Nope. That's still where we're going, Brian. Stay with Dad? Well, we'll just have to see how it works. Mom won't let us. Well, Mom will still be at work. We'll go home, we'll pack some things. I got some money stashed away someplace, probably. Enough for a couple bus tickets. Can I say goodbye to Nancy? Oh, that's right. She'll be at the house soon, expecting to babysit you. Boy, have I got some apologizing to do. Let's go. He's shown up yet? No, and he didn't show up for the team picture. You're kidding. I just know there's something wrong. I mean, maybe the police came and took them all away. Parks, will you calm down? They're not going to put Michael in jail. He hasn't done anything. I'm scared to death to go over there this afternoon. I know, but it'll be okay. Mrs. Reynolds will be at work, and she doesn't know you called. And you'll be babysitting Brian just like any other day. Thanks.
Mrs. Reynolds, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I came to take care of Brian. It's after three. Yeah, well, he's not here. You can go on home. Where is he? That's none of your business. Just get out of here and leave me alone. Mrs. Reynolds, uh, where is Brian? A and where's Michael? He wasn't in school all day. Look, little Miss Busybody, you just stop snooping around here. I have enough problems without you coming around and making it worse. It was you who called those people, wasn't it? I, I was trying to help. It was you. I knew it was you. But I, I was trying to help you and Brian. You sneaky little brat. Spreading lies about us? Mrs. Reynolds, please. Try to understand. I had to do it. It was for Brian. Just when everything was getting better. I was trying to make a fresh start. And you come around and ruin it all. But it wasn't getting better, don't you see? You need help. You shut up. Shut up! Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> child abuse, or if you need help in controlling your own abusive actions, you can call the following toll-free child abuse hotline, 1-800-422-4453. The National Child Abuse Hotline is a non-profit organization. Once again, the number is 1-800-422-4453. It is a free call.